Morning, Johnny Walker here. It's Friday, TGIF. Been a great week, got lots done. Lots of saws out. Yesterday I kind of spent a day of just modding one saw, a MS-261 for a fellow out in Ontario. Um, and stripped a lot apart. Me and Simon stripped a whole bunch of new ones apart. So I was my coworker. He's lived next door to me for years and uh, just a great fella. We work together really well. He's into drag racing, I'm into the kart racing. And he might be going into a bent up at the new Saratoga redone track coming up. So hopefully he gets to go out once this year. I've been karting a few times and I got a big race coming up this weekend. Is our big best one of the year so far. We're gonna have guys coming from the mainland, Vancouver. Uh, one fellow from Alberta I think I used to race with, Rob Kazakowski. He's a great driver. He's raced down in the U.S. lots, so it'd be nice to have some input from him how our uh, track's going. We're going to go to that the Vancouver Island Motorsport Circuit again up in Cowichan. Beautiful track. And uh, we're going to... Uh, first time our go-kart clubs actually ran a race since 2004. That's quite a long time ago. But there still has been active kart racing on Vancouver Island in Victoria, B.C. at Western Speedway. So it's kind of kept the... Kept some people around and some numbers, but a bunch of us old members have gotten back into it in the last two years. And we're really trying to get ourselves a, a, a schedule again and um, a, yeah, a race series. So I'm going to help officiate this weekend. I'll be the tech fella. I go around and make sure everyone's carts are safe. Um, they're wearing the proper protective wear. And all the motors are legal with the restrictors or whatever they're using for carburetors and exhaust. I got all that in my notes. Uh, I kind of trying to in, do more of the introduction of the Briggs Elbow 206 class, which is the Briggs and Stratton racing engine. It's a sealed motor system. Great class, big, biggest around North America these days. So this morning I had to clean up. This room was such a mess. I've been so busy in the last year man it's just you know i probably haven't cleaned it for six months so i came in and swept all out and vacuumed it and and uh just started going through putting some stuff away and you know what i found it was really cool man this um i found the original blueprint layout of our capital city cart club track at the mountaineer cart circuit a friend of mine Jan. Cole designed this track, did all the blueprints and layout, and me and other me and my family and other club members and friends all built it. So there's the original blueprint of it. Pretty cool. I'm gonna take that today and give it to him, or to, on Sunday give it to him. He's an engineer and uh, he's the one that did it. Maybe he doesn't even have a copy of it. I also found some really cool stuff years ago in my karting career. In 1995, I went and raced at uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was called the 95 George Kugler Memorial Cup race. And all the go-karters from all over the world came. It was just like a World Cup race. So in, at that race, I ran uh, Arisco engines that were made in Spain. They weren't the dominant. They weren't, they weren't that great, but they went okay. I had a great time. A friend of mine, Rick Parker, came with me, and I was with Troy Pike and his family too, and some other folks that I uh, know in three years of racing down in the U.S., the Olden Paul brothers, and uh, yeah, just a few others, hard to mention them all. But anyways, you get it. I also got to go for a ride in NASCAR as a passenger there. Man, now what a rush that was. The bank corners are incredible, man. I never realized how steep those bank corners are until you actually go on that track or try to walk up them. You almost need a ladder. So at that race, I wasn't up front. No, I was mid to backpack, but I was hauling butt. Did okay, finished all my races, didn't blow any engines up. It was cool, had a great time. I got to go to a bunch of NASCAR shops and stuff while I was there, and plus Husqvarna's uh, main distributor uh, warehouse where I uh, met up with the um, president at that time, Dave Zerfoss, I think he was president, yes he was then. So yeah, this is a poster actually. It's funny, I found these posters this morning. So this is a poster of that race in Carolina. Well, with all my other go-kart junk in here though. 
sort it out. So yeah, there's the original advertisement poster. You can see there they how they did the go-kart track kind of design it's inside of the um, speedway itself. We didn't race on the big speedway, of course. And then there's a small oval in the back end there where they raced dirt carts, I think. So yeah, that was that was pretty cool. I actually finished. I was the top Canadian finisher. And the way it worked is is to um there was a world cup race in 96 which i was very fortunate because i was the top canadian finisher at charlotte canada uh asn the motorsports division actually paid for my my plane ticket and my uh, entry fee to represent canada in japan for the of all races 1996 cik FIA World Cup Formula Shell Kart Race in Japan. The Ayrton Seta Memorial Cup. What an honor, man. What an honor. So that was in 96. Again, my friend Rick Parker came with me. He was my pit man. And it was very fortunate to have businesses in Nanaimo and my parents, mom and dad, love them, to uh, help me get there. It cost me around $10,000, but I raised most of the money through customers of mine, that are loggers thank you all for that can't remember you all but i had a i gave them all thank you plaques and pictures from when i went there at that race i did okay i was another mid-pack runner i got to meet up with jetson button that races formula one now yarno truly was there too and a few other the uh big time uh formula one racers uh, that are out there now they were all started in karting uh, Jensen Button was right pitted two down for me, you know. Didn't know where he was going. I didn't know he was going to be a Formula One driver. Doesn't matter. Everyone's everyone's awesome drivers that come out of this. But what a racetrack that was. The uh, Suzuka Circuit is right beside the Formula One Suzuka Circuit track. So this is a small miniature Formula One track. It's basically based on the kind of design of the Formula One track, but just a smaller version for carts. We we're, were hitting around 100 miles an hour in that straightaway. I was running a CRG chassis with CRG engines from uh, an engine tuner in Holland called Peter De Bruin. Peter De Bruin's probably the best, or was, probably still is, one of the best car engine builders ever, tuner. He can make your motor go. The rotary valves, we ran what we call Formula A in those days, 100cc rotary valves, around 20,000 RPM. Forget what the horsepower is, but. You get what I mean. They're fast. You have to tune the tune the carb as you're as you're racing. Carburetors are on the side of the engine, so when you go down the straightaway, you have an air box on there. It's like an air silencer, and that's part of your air filter. And the end of the straightaway, you touch the air box like this with your hand. It chokes the engine. It gives it more fuel and cools it down. Then, then you go through your other corners. The end of the straightaway, always yeah, choke. Ooh. Right, right when you're right at the end of the choke, boop, do your turn. There's a real knack to it. You watch some karting racing on YouTube, old kart races, of uh, races like that with some of them drivers that are up in Formula One now, like Lewis Hamilton and those guys. Watch the British Open when Lewis Hamilton goes from the back end of the pack to the front. Amazing. Anyways, yeah, karting, awesome. Here's uh, a poster I got years ago I found from uh, Bobby Rahal, 1986 Indy 500 winner and card champion. He signed that to me, to Don number 10. I met him in Toronto at the uh, Molson Indy, I guess they called it in those days. Yeah, that was awesome. I used, to, I used to get pit passes and go down right into the, the pit areas where the drivers are. Years ago, uh, a friend of mine, Digi Don, our, our local camera guy did a lot of pictures for us karting guys and, and race car guys on the on the island here. Wildlife Photography is his name, his, his company name. He um, he got me a press pass one time for the, to the Vancouver Molson Indy. And I had, didn't have a camera, but he's got all these fancy things. So you know what I did? I bought 20, I think, disposable cameras. You know the ones you used to buy? You just take the pictures and put them in a bag and get them done later. So I did that. There I have with all these press guys. We're right in the pit areas and everything. And I'm using these little throwaway cameras, but I didn't care. I was in, man. 
That's the day I actually got to meet Paul Newman. Paul Newman is one of my favorite actors and car racers. I actually have at home an original karting digest, a karting magazine. Uh, it came out, Carter News it was called. It came out every month to the IKF members. He's on the front page, and I'm going to show you guys that one day. And I, I kept that, uh, along with some other uh, stuff I have on him. I love that guy. Uh, and I like his salad dressings. Because it goes, his money goes to charity, too. So, yeah, man. That's my day. Cleaning up. Um, I got eight 390 cylinders to do. An 066 still. A 372 X Torque. And many more back of the shop. Some Echoes. Uh, others, some Stills. Some 462s. Yeah, so. I guess I better get off here. Um, yeah, so racing Sunday. Going to get there about 12. Me and my daughter Taylor and my buddy Steve Addison. Uh, that I got into karting. So he, uh, he'll look out to the kind of the carts. Well, me and Taylor go around and write everything down. And get all the tech stuff done. She's going to help me with my paperwork. Because I'm bad with paperwork. But I know what I'm looking at. So she's just good to write it all down for me. So anyways, yeah. I'm going to try to have my GoPro on. And get, get learn how to use it this time properly. So I can actually get some footage. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, I just wanted to share that. I'm pretty proud of some of the stuff I got to do when I was younger. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of young guys don't get that opportunity. But I worked my butt off, you know. I worked in shops and logging camps and saved my money. And that's what I spent my money on. I didn't, I didn't do life right by buying property or, or things like that where I could have, should have. You know how that goes. But I did what I wanted to do. I traveled around the world racing go-karts, uh, visiting places. Um, just had a great time. Met a lot of really good people, really nice people. Remember the fellow I hung out with in Japan, too, who's pitted with us. We called him the Flying Finn. Can't remember his name, man, but he was a cool guy. We took him out to had a few beers with him, stuff there. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Oh, yeah, there was this one restaurant, too, in, in Japan. So we wanted to go for just sort of like a North American meal. So we went to this place called the Steakhouse or whatever. And we go there, this, this steakhouse, and we eat. And the owner comes over, and he speaks good good English. He goes, oh, where are you from? He's all Canada. I'm here representing Canada. I'm a crazy Canuck racing carts. And the other fellow, my friend from Finland, he says, yeah, I'm the flying Finn. He even started calling himself that. And the guy, the Chinese uh, restaurant owner, says, hey, oh, can I get you guys his picture? Oh, sure. So a couple of the waitresses came over, me and the flying Finn and my buddy Rick, we took a picture, took a picture of us all, eh? And it was a Polaroid, you know? So we were finishing our dinner and he comes back. He's already got the picture already framed. And I'm not kidding you. He put it right up beside Ayrton Senna's picture in his restaurant. I'm sure it's there today because my friend Gary Smith had gone there and raced NASCAR at Suzuka. And he went to the same restaurant. He got the same thing, and his picture got put up too. So funny. The guy just loved uh, people coming to race there and loved his racing. So uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, what a trip. That was that was a lot of fun. So anyways, like I say, a lot of people don't get to have that opportunity. And I, I believe if you have dreams like that, you should go out and do them. Because you'll regret it later on in life. You know, if I never went and done that, I was like, geez, I could have, I should have. Money ain't everything, man. You know, go spend it on what you want to do. That's what I do. That's why I'm broke. But I have fun. And I was still to have still have fun. Next season we'll get back into our our logger sports. Me and my dad got a, a, a few old McCullough's done up. Mine here that I'm gonna go run the next next week and I'm gonna do a video. I've already told you that a million times, but I'm gonna do it. Dial that in, and I got a 084 my dad's built for um we got a bunch of girls that run do logger sports here and it's got a pink pipe on it and everything and it sounds really good i think it's going to go well so we're going to test that one too i have to go start them all my dad can't start them anymore unfortunately but that's okay we tune them together and you get them happening you know then mom gets mad with all the noise in the background now she doesn't she loves the sound of racing saws and go-karts she's an old pit boss lady from the go-karts too my mom did a lot of work with our go-kart club a lot of work with logger sports in canada here she was the president of the catalog logger sports for a few years and head judge 
So we've been involved with a lot of stuff and that's how we know a lot of people around the world and um, on the island here. So like I say, keep us on the wood. Have a great day. I'm going to keep the rubber on the road on Sunday. Hopefully I can get some footage of that. And uh, just have a great day. Bye.